Pastrami. No. I want a pastrami. Don't make a scene. Why waste the six dollars? Here's a knife. Put it through your heart. <laughs> I want a pastrami. Don't make a scene. Why don't you just order another triple bypass? <laughs> you won't be crying in the back of an ambulance again? Uh, what do you have? Al, you're killing yourself. Why are you trying to kill yourself? <laughs> pastrami. Hurry. You'll have the blueberry blintzes. No blintzes. They're on the menu. I know they're on the menu, but they're not going to be on your plate because we don't have any blintzes. Hey, that's it. It's time to cross a line through the blueberry blintzes. Six months we've had blintzes on the menu. We've been living a lie. Get a new blintz. And replace Evelyn's blintz? Are you crazy? Her blintz was renowned throughout the land, Lou. Nathan, your wife is gone. We shall not look upon her blintz again. Now snap out of it, people are hungry. It was a secret recipe from my grandmother to my mother to my wife. The shell was cloud-like yet firm. Oh, the blueberries achieved a certain balance of tart, but not to the point where it sucked your cheeks in. That was a work of art. You cannot replace a work of art. The blue boy is art. This is dough and fruit. <laughs> You know, my life would be a lot better if I can afford the things I want. And I can afford the things I want if they just raise the limit on my credit card. How much is your limit? Presently, I'm in a $5,000 range. Where exactly in that range are you, Reggie? $200. <laughs> you have a $200 limit? Oh, good. Tell everybody. <laughs> what they give you? The American Express Wood Card? <laughs> you know me. My name is Pinocchio. <laughs> You all have your moment of levity at my expense. <laughs> Reggie, how about your moment of going down, getting some more Kaiser rolls from the stock room? Fine. Send me to the basement. I'll just move in and live under the stairs. Me and the Kaiser rolls will build our own civilization. Mr. <laughs> Singh, you want me to... Yeah, would you please? <laughs> I was destined for a better life. I was made for the finer things. We all think that sometimes. I mean it. I don't even think this life is supposed to be mine. Oh, yeah? Whose is it? Let me tell you what's the truth. I think somebody slipped up. Hmm? What I'm about to divulge to you is done only by me and your father. You mean our father? I mean your father. Now, I'm listening. Your father, Leonard Patterson, told me. On the night I was born, he spent 15 hours pacing the soles off his shoes with none other than Floyd Patterson whose own baby boy was born the same day, the same hour, and in the very same hospital as me. No kidding, heavyweight champ? What a coincidence. Yeah, quite a coincidence. Too much of a coincidence. What are you saying? I'm saying that it got me to thinking. Got me to thinking about this. I found that in the newspaper a couple of weeks ago. Oh, yeah. It's about the two babies that got mixed up at first. Families raised the babies for years, and they just discovered the mix-up now. You think the hospital mixed you up? <laughs> I was born in that same hospital, Mitchell. Well, no, no, no. If they're doing it now when they got computers, they did it for sure back then when all they had was some tired old nurse who took a look at two babies named Patterson and said, uh, you go here, you go there, I'm gonna go home and watch Bonanza. <laughs> Come on, Rich. You have no evidence. I have all the evidence I need standing right in front of me. What are you talking about? I'm talking about puny little welterweight you and heavyweight Hercules me. <laughs> I'm be serious about this. Hey, you were the one who looks like daddy. You were the one who was daddy's little boy. Well, I might have been daddy's little boy if they gave me to the right daddy. <laughs> uh-huh. And, uh, how do you think Mama's going to take this news? Well, she's cleaning Mr. Singer's apartment. I'm just going to go up there and tell her. I am seeking out the true origins of my existence. Personal feelings cannot be spared. What you're saying is you may not be my son. I'm afraid so. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Mama, our long family nightmare is over. <laughs> Where's my new son? Did you bring him? Mama, 
how could you talk this way to me? Reginald Clifford Patterson, how dare you approach your mother with a story like this? Mama, we know that it was fact that Floyd's baby boy was born in that same hospital. We don't know any such thing. It's just a story your daddy used to tell. Yeah, but you were there, weren't you? Yes, I was there. But you'll excuse me if I wasn't in the waiting room having tea and cookies. I was in labor with you for 150 hours. You tried to kill me then, and you haven't stopped yet. Mama, and I'd still like to call you that if I may. I thank you for raising me to be honest and hardworking, but I am so tired of not having anything. I'm so tired of looking in store windows at things I can't afford and, and looking at places on TV that I will never go. You can be tired all you want, but you're still my son. How can you be so sure? Huh? How do you know they didn't switch babies on you? One baby looks just like the next baby. Not in your case. <laughs> what was my case? The ugly case. <laughs> Huh? I never told you this before, but you have forced it out of me. You were a pumpkin-haired baby. <laughs> what? I tried sneaking out of that hospital, but they caught me in the parking lot and said, Don't you leave here without your pumpkin. <laughs> they did? <laughs> and I finally broke down and took you. Because I knew if I didn't, You'll end up on somebody's porch with a candle in your head. <laughs> How are you making this up? Well, of course I am. And your daddy was making up his stories, too. Your daddy always liked to make up stories. Well, maybe so, but I gotta do what I gotta do. Fine! Have a nice day. Happy Halloween! <laughs> That just because Reggie was born on the same day as Floyd Patterson's son, he thinks he has anything to do with Floyd Patterson. Yeah, I'm sure we're all born on the same day as some famous person. Yeah. How about you? Yeah, I got the same birthday as Aretha Franklin. Perfect example. Just because you have the same birthday as Aretha Franklin doesn't mean that you are related to her or that you can even sing for that matter, right? I guess so. You make me feel. You make me feel like. Natural woman. All right, I'm calling the hospital. You know, about the blintz situation. We have no situation, Lou, because we have no blintzes. I used to get up on a Sunday morning and look forward to coming here for a cup of coffee and a blue. No blue. more. End of an era, Lou. Not if I put the word out in the street that Nathan Singer is looking for a new blintz. You wouldn't. I would. I figure in this neighborhood there's bound to be a fair number of widow blintzer makers who would leap at the opportunity. You didn't. I did. Yoo-hoo, Mr. Singer. I got for you a blintzer. You'll thank me later. I can do ten. Mrs. Drepter, oh. uh, 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 yeah. look, Mrs. Drepter, before you get your blintz factory in an uproar, let me assure you that you are the unfortunate victim of an ill-conceived rumor which will go no farther. You, Mr. Singer! <laughs> oh, my God, it's an invasion. You try mine first. Hose is like a brick. You have to eat mine. What? A brick? <laughs> Elaine Meltzer, I could give you such a clock. Nathan Singer. Look. You fought in the war with my Stanley, remember? For his memory, try my blends. Try mine. And mine is my blends. I'll kill you for this. You And so, Daddy Floyd, if I may be so familiar. I know 30 years of raising someone you believe to be your son leads to certain natural attachments, but these will dissolve in time. Uh, cordially, best wishes. Ah, suddenly yours. Oh, oh boy. 
Oh, my. Hide me. What is going on up there, Mr. Singer? A stampede is going on up there. What's going on down here? I'm writing a letter to Floyd Patterson, and I don't want to hear that I'm crazy. Oh, Reggie. You're not crazy. Why not? Do you think I happen to wish I was born to the sewing machine singers instead of the delicatessen singers? You just be the best you, whoever you are. You too. Thank you. You're welcome. Excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> Mr. Stinger, there's a vicious old bitty mom up there. I know. How long do you think we can hold out here? Reggie. Yeah. Mitchell has some news that might interest you. I called the hospital. I talked to the person in birth records. I found out everybody was having a baby that night you were born. Hey, I don't want to hear a bunch of stuff from somebody who doesn't know anything. This is my life. I'm checking this out myself. It's my personal quest. Well, let me start you off. Under the peas, there were two men whose wives had babies that night. One of them was Daddy. Tell him. And the other one was Floyd Patterson. I knew it. I knew that I was a child of destiny. After all these years, the truth has come to light. I am the actual son of Floyd and whoever his wife was at the time, Patterson. <laughs> Former Ma. The doors to my secluded suburban estate will always be open to you. Reggie, all we know is his wife had a baby at the same hospital on the same night. Why couldn't I have learned this earlier? I could have been there when Sonny Liston knocked my daddy down for the count. I could have been standing ringside crying, Daddy, Daddy, get up, get up. <laughs> Reggie, happy as I'd be to trade up to any other brother. Do you know what the odds are of the baby's being switched? You have got to believe, ex bro. You want to know what I believe? I believe that Floyd Patterson is sitting up in his big house, looking down at his puny little Mitchell look-alike son, saying, the hell you mean, you done drawing? Keep eating, you runt! Reggie, look, I have the address and phone number from the hospital. You want it? Of course not. That's 30-year-old information. Boy, has been through 12 big houses by now. I gotta do the intelligent thing. I gotta write them care wide world of sports. Fine. <laughs> While you're doing the intelligent thing, I'll check out this information. Hey, just be careful when you open that door. Get down! Get down! Get down! Do you mind explaining all those old ladies? They're auditioning to replace Evelyn's irreplaceable blintzes, Mrs. Patterson. Oh, I see. Of course, you know how one of a kind Evelyn's blintzes were. Yes, I remember. She never told you how she made them? No. And no one is ever going to be able to duplicate them. Well, you're going to have to go back up there sometimes. They're storming the gates. No, I am not going to have to go back up there. Because if I stay down here, they'll just go away. <laughs> um, obviously, I'm going to have to go up there. <laughs> Ladies, it's time to begin. So, ladies, 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 thank you for coming to the first and God willing only Singer and Sons neighborhood blintz off. <laughs> now, I want to introduce you to our distinguished panel of judges Lou, <laughs> Claudia, and Sheldon. Why? Because he's my nephew. Okay. <laughs> As you can see, to ensure Blintz anonymity, we have marked the Blintzes not with names, but with the letters A to H, representing our eight finalists. So, let us begin with the letter A. That's mine! Oh, thank you, Mrs. Meltzer. Mine. Very good, very tasty indeed. Thank you, Mr. Gold. How can I show you my appreciation? We'll talk. <laughs> Mr. Gold. Feed me, my dumpling. <laughs> well, big shot nephew, what do you think? 
I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. Oh, <laughs> we're big girls. You're the judge. Whatever you say goes. I like them all the same. Putts. <laughs> uh, Mr. Singer, the judges are deadlocked. Sheldon can't make a decision, and I think Mr. Golden and Mrs. Tarkasian took off to Atlantic City for the weekend. All right, Claudia, you are going to have to pick the winner. Uh-uh. I'm not about to take this responsibility on my head. Why not? Because these women are mean, Mr. Singer. <laughs> these are the widow women from hell. All right. All right. I'll announce that the contest is a tie. And there is no winner. Uh-huh, you do that. And they'll pick your eyes out. Uh-uh. You are going to have to decide the winner yourself. No, Claudia, I can't. Why not? Because it'll never be as good as Evelyn's. You know what I think? What? I think that you think replacing your wife's cooking is like replacing your wife. That's completely crazy. And dead on right. Listen, Mr. Singer. I know wherever your wife is now, I bet she's looking down and saying, would you just make a decision before these crazy old ladies kill Sheldon? Right? Oh, right. Oh, right. Oh, right. Oh, ladies, ladies, ladies. Oh, all right, ladies, ladies, please. It's my decision. All right, line up the blinces. You might want to taste this one first, Mr. Singer. Oh, Mrs. Patterson, not you too. Just taste it. I... My God. Kind of like your wife's? Exactly. Here, Claudia. Mm -hmm. We have a winner. Fix! <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Patterson, how did you do it? Same way your wife did it for years. You mean you found the recipe? No. I found the phone number of the distributors in New Jersey. <laughs> What, you mean Evelyn bought her homemade blinches? From Schoenfeld of Passaic. Baked fresh daily. <laughs> oh, boy. That Evelyn Singer was one sneaky broad. <laughs> no, no, wait, wait a minute. Now, wait a minute, Mrs. Patterson. But how about my mother and her mother before her? Schoenfeld's been in business for 90 years. Serving three generations of singer women, keeping secrets from three generations of singer men. <laughs> Evelyn lied about her blinces. Nathan, be thankful it was only blinces your wife lied to you about. With me and my Stanley. Oh, oh. Yes, yes. <laughs> You're the best. Every Thursday. <laughs> Nathan? You gotta start getting out a little. Well, someday. <laughs> hey, Reg. Huh? Thought you might like to meet this guy. This is my mother. You're Mrs. Patterson? Yes, I am. Well, we've never had the pleasure of meeting. I, I, I knew your husband, Leonard. He and I met at the hospital when our first sons were born together. You're Floyd Patterson. Yeah, I am. How are you? <laughs> You're Floyd Patterson? Yeah. What the hell happened to you? This the brother? That's him. Wait a minute. Hold the phone. When you were in the hospital with her husband, did you happen to notice my real father there? Big fella, darker than you, with a knockout punch and everlast written across his belly button. <laughs> oh, I'm afraid I don't recall anybody like that. It was just me and your father, Leonard. My father, Leonard. Hey, listen. I'll never forget your dad. He was one great guy. Fifteen hours he and I spent together pacing up and down in that waiting room. But you know the thing I remember most? What? The look on his face when the nurse came out and told him he had a son. He had big plans for you. He told me how hard he was going to work to make sure that your life was a lot more comfortable growing up than his was. But I, I guess you know all that. Uh, yeah. I'm sure your dad would have been proud of you. You look like it turned out just fine. I guess he sort of did. I'm sorry his daddy isn't here to see that. Yeah, me too. Mr. Patterson's a doorman. Yeah, 73rd and Park. 
Real ritzy building. Lots of wealthy people live there. Wealthy people? Oh, yeah. They tell me all their troubles. Hey, you know, that reminds me of something your dad said. I'll never forget this. There we were, the two of us, looking through the nursery window at our newborn children. And he turned to me and he says, Hey, Floyd, we're rich. I never forgot that. <laughs> Mr. Patterson? Yeah. Nathan Singer, the proprietor. Hey, how you doing? Listen, why don't you stay for lunch on the house? Yeah. You know, we have the best blitzers in town. <laughs> Let me just take you up on that. I haven't had any blitzers in a long time. Neither have we. Well, Ma, I, uh... Guess I'm ready to return to the family now. Oh, you are, are you? Well, you just hold your horses. Huh? Mr. Patterson? Yes, ma'am. How did your son turn out? Mama! My Richie? Oh, he turned out great. He, he teaches sixth grade in Staten Island. Really? Mama! <laughs> oh, but I guess he sort of looks like you, huh? Oh, sure, he's a chip off the old shamrock, you know. <laughs> oh, Come to Mama Pumpkin. <laughs> this is Jane Carr. Louise, a dear John, are you having any, um, sexual problems? Don't worry about us, Louise. You've got enough problems of your own on Dear John coming up next. Then Sam's playing Blind Man's Bluff when he leaps into the life of a concert pianist on Quantum Leap tonight. And Thursday night, NBC's newest comedy hit is now a full summer series, Seinfeld, Thursday night. <laughs> 